Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, good night, and welcome to another full interview of the Strategy Factory, a place where I get to interview top leaders from around the globe and learn more about what they think is, is strategy and uh, what strategy means to them. Here uh, and today, I'm with Mr. Tomas Ferraro. Tomas is in New York. He's a, he's a guy that I've met for a while now. Um, good afternoon, good night for you, Mr. Tomas. How are you? I'm doing well. Good night, indeed, here in uh, New York City. How are you? I'm really well. I'm really well. I'm in Sydney, for those who don't know, Sydney, Australia. And um, the first thing that I would like you to ask you, Thomas, is um, in two sentences, who's Thomas Ferraro? So, first of all, let me start off with two sentences is not enough. I'm a person that likes to speak, so you're going you're gonna to have to bear with me a little bit. Um, I'm... Tomas Ferraro, I'm another face on a screen to all you guys, um, but in reality, I'm, I'm in Argentine, uh, living here in New York City. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to, uh, or some might think that it's unfortunate, but I think it's fortunate to have lived in many different places in the world. Uh, I've lived in Argentina, I've lived in Brazil, I've lived here in the States uh, for now about 20 years. Um, we left, uh, we left Argentina with my family in, in the early 2000s after the economic crisis and everything that comes with that. Um, and then, you know, I settled here in, in Connecticut um, where I was able to go to school. Then I got into university and I went to university in, in New York um, and then eventually was able to, you know, land a, a series of jobs that led me to uh, the beautiful New York City, um, which in my opinion is best city in the world. I've never been to Sydney, but I would love to, to, to see it and compare it. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, all of this is, is me trying to say that I'm, a, I'm an Argentine here in New York, you know, trying not to lose my roots, uh, maintaining a healthy balance between Argentine asados, um, drinking mate, watching football and working, you know, day to day job and uh, hanging out with my family. And you still choose New York over Buenos Aires, which uh, which is a big a bit of a backstabbing, but that's fine. Uh, hey, <laughs> Thomas, th thanks for that intro. And um, and uh, just uh, so we cut the um, all the middle things, I want to go straight to the point. Though. And I want to ask you, what do you think? Um, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you think about strategy? Because as you know, this is this is what we want to talk about. We want to talk about strategy. So what is what's the first thing that comes to mind? Yeah, that's a that's a loaded question. Um, I think strategy is is the skeleton. Strategy is the, the to use a, a terrible metaphor, the the blossoming tree, right? It's a it's a seed that you plant to then create something out of it, right? Um, it's it's multifaceted. It has different branches and different leaves that come out and different colors even. Um, and it's, you know, it's the type of thing that, that leads you in a direction, but with, with, a with, with a goal in mind, but it can lead you in all different sorts of directions, I think. That's great. And, um, you've been, you've been in the media industry for a long time. Um, you've been in ESPN for quite a bit. You're now, you've not been in Giphy for a long time and I'm really keen on learning more about that, but, uh, obviously strategy in different areas and different industries differ quite a lot. Um, before we deep dive into strategy in the media industry, um, I would like us, oh, I would like you to give us a bit of an overview about the media industry and how, how did it actually change since you first started? Because when you first started, I, I think smartphones were not even a thing back then. So uh, <laughs> uh, you, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but uh, how, how did it all start or, or since you've been involved and then how have things changed? Lucas, I'm not that much older than you. Come on, you're better than that. Uh, no, but you're right. It's I, you know, the, the funny thing is that I've been in different industries that I think depict it a, a little better. You're right. I started at ESPN, um, where the the industry there and the business there was, you know, a little bit more more basic. And obviously it was contained by its its mother company of, of Disney. So, you know, it's more of a controlled area, but um you know, it's, it's, it's a slow, I feel like the media, the media world had a, a slow evolution, right? It was, it was mostly based on, on sales and based on money. And now it's become uh, something a little more fluid. It's become uh, something where you have to adapt to, to different things that are happening in the world. You know, you're forced to be creative because 
the world around you is moving so quickly. Um, and if you're not creative and if you're not, you know, innovating in a certain way, then you're not going to keep up. Um, so, you know, whether, whether the, the industry now is run by adrenaline junkies or something, I don't know, but it's, it's fun to be a part of it now. I've moved on to, to a different world where it's, it is much more uh, fast paced and, and ever evolving. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think just the, the, the world has, has changed in terms of, of the, the media world. So when you say change, um, what, what do you mean? Because the first time that we talked, or when we were actually talking about having this conversation, we talked about how um, we maybe 15, 20 years ago, we were used to sitting in, the, you know, in front of the TV for long hours, watching long shows, consuming media in a certain way, and how things have changed. And I mean, you, you can also see that in your trajectory and how you change jobs uh, from something that is more uh, traditional, like, or, or I mean, it's still ever evolving, but it's still either sports in a TV to now build basically building gifts and uh, everything, uh, how you guys are actually evolving, but uh, going from longer sort of consumption to very short snippets and time and energy. So you say this is an ever evolving industry. Can you kind of double click into that and, and tell us a little bit more about it? Sure. I mean, it, like, like you said, it goes from, from long form, you know, it, well, let's, let's go even further back. It goes from newspapers, from magazines to, you know, print to um, long form ads, 30 second ads that cost a billion dollars still today, which is still a very, a very functional piece of, of the media world. Um, but then it's, it's moved on to, to quick, short, really small snippets of, of content that we have to digest quickly and move on to the next one, right? So it goes from, like I said, print, which is something static and something slow and relatively basic to today's world of a, let's say a TikTok where you're literally just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and every 20 seconds you're getting something new and it's just, you know, your eyes are just going and everything is just visually appealing. Um, so it's, you know, it's gone from from long and slow to, <laughs> short and quick uh in in a way um and for giphy you know if, if you really think about it it's gone from phone conversations to text messages where you have you know the three letters per key you remember that um then to emoticons now emojis and then you know where we come in is we we are the the next evolution of that where it's gifs and stickers and um quick quick hits um, to, to help you, you know, to help facilitate messaging and communication. Um, and, you know, what, what we've realized uh, at Giphy is that um, what we want to do um, in this ever evolving and, and crazy world of, of media is that we want to power, you know, help, help people express themselves, right? Mm -hmm. Power these conversations, give them uh, a little bit of a compliment um, into what is just a regular text message can be push to the next level with a you know funny gif or a, a sticker that you attach to to whatever you're writing so um it's really you know trying to trying to help you know people express themselves and uh and i think it's a really interesting thing that we've uh that we've created in the way and also the way the world is just is just moving along right now absolutely how do you how do you drive the product then because um i'm i'm curious to know obviously i i think there's there's a pool from um from the users to actually I mean, you're, you're bringing the content to them to help them show their emotions or express themselves, as you were saying. Who's, who's doing the push and who's doing the pull? Are you guys trying to anticipate what's coming and building new things? You're always out in the lookout and listening, doing active listening for what people are kind of requesting. Um, how do you build a, a new media giant from scratch when, uh, when you're actually building innovative things? You're, you're building the new trends. Yeah, I mean that's a that's a great question. Um, I think it's a little bit of a of a of a balance, right? It's um, you know it's the it's the company trying to come up with new ideas and um, build new things and new products, but at the same time, those products are nothing without the consumer, right? Um, so, like I said, it it is a little bit of a mix, and I think consumers expect you know consistency, right? So. They come back to your to our app, for example, um, and they expect to see the same thing, um, you know, over and over again in, in a certain way. But also, 
somehow they want, you know, new stuff injected in there, right? So that's where the, that's where the product, that's where the, the company comes in, right? We're there to give them the, the, same, the same thing, but then, you know, shoot them with a little bit of, of, of a random something that they can maybe latch onto or maybe not. And you, you user test those things, right? You, you keep throwing things at the wall um, and seeing what, what sticks. Um, so, you know, uh, at Giphy, we, we, we do this a lot where, you know, Giphy is, is really a beautiful place because if I log on to Giphy, I wanna see, you know, GIFs of, of Messi. I wanna see sports things. But we, we do a great job at having a messy GIF right next to a happy birthday GIF, right next to a little cute puppy dog on a skateboard, you know? <laughs> and it's those three things that, you know, work together. Um, and they just give you that, that sense of, okay, I know I was here for this, but I also kind of like this skateboarding dog. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go down that road a little bit, right? Um, so I think it's, it's a little bit of both, right? Um, and that's the beauty of, of the media industry, right? You, you don't really know what's going to be a good product until you put it out there, you see how users react, um, and then you kind of grow from there. And that goes kind of back to, you know, what I was saying about strategy in general, like you never really know what's going to come out of that initial seed. Um, but you know, you have to plant that seed to, to make mm. the tree grow. So um, you know, the, the user is, is very important. I would, I would give the user, uh, 51% importance. Um, and then the, uh, the company, the 49%. That's, that's great. That's, that's, that's great insights. Um, one of the things that you've done, uh, is, is you've worked on partnerships and, uh, and, and this is where I kind of really want to dig in a bit more. And, uh, this idea of building partnerships for media outlets, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but obviously when in, in the traditional media system, um, the media would work as an outlet for and users to either entertain themselves or, or read and get educated. And the, the main source of income was selling ads, ads to people that they would then see and therefore that, that would make the cycle go around. Um, as the media kind of industry evolved, new opportunities started arising and the idea of building partnerships is one of those. So can you tell us uh, a little bit more about this concept of partnerships in the media industry, what you've done in the past, and then uh, we can deep dive more into how to sustain those partnerships and uh, how to make them work really well. Sure. Um, I think <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to keep hitting you with, with bad metaphors, but I hope you, I hope <laughs> you guys enjoy them. Um, I think, you know, think of your, of your whole life, right? Um, what, you're, what you've been able to achieve, um, what you've been able to do with, without friends, without family, without support, probably not much, right? Like, you know, again, like this isn't a great metaphor, but that is what I think partners are and partnerships are to the media business. You know, mm -hmm. if, if you have an awesome product, you have an awesome idea, um, but you don't, not, you don't have who to share that with or who uh to look for support for that you know certain product um or the right people to to help you launch or distribute or push that product then you're not really gonna gonna get too far right um and that's where that's where i think partnerships is is so important um it's like really your 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 friend or your 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 base where anything is gonna is gonna come out of um, so, you know, I know it's at the end of the day, business is, uh, like you said, it's about making money and, and, you know, having sales and not being in the red. Um, but I think relationships, um, and partnerships, uh, all of those that you're making along the way, um, are the most important thing to keep that growth, um, happening to keep that, that growth, you know, sustained, right. Um, and it'll open, you know, many other doors along the way that maybe you didn't even know were, were doors that could be open. So um, I think partnerships are, are extremely important to, to the media business world. Um, and just, you know, knowing how to, knowing how to sustain them is, is equally as important after that, you know. Oh, I mean, you, you just opened the door for the next question, which is how do you sustain them? What are the strategies to build effective <laughs> partnerships? Uh, how, how do you make them happen? I mean, uh, it's, it's about, I think being 
real and being honest and being humble and being, you know, consistent, right? Um, you want to treat your partner the same way that they would like to, to be treated. So um, it's about bringing in those like core values that you've learned as, as a child or as a, as a, you know, as you grow through the world um, and applying those into, into the business world. Um, like I said, we're all trying to, we're all trying to sell something or do something that works for us. Um, but I think, you know, nowadays people are too smart. People are too savvy and they know that um, you, they know when something's bullshit, you know? So um, it's, it's about the way you carry yourself. It's about the way you, you do your business um, that, that really matters today, especially mm -hmm. for longevity, for longevity. So, um, you know, at, at a company like Giphy, for example, we try to uh, set values, right? So at the beginning of, of, the, of, of Giphy, when it first started seven years ago, um, it was our current CEO, Alex Chung, and then a, a partner of his, um, they brought on one more guy and three people decided, hey, we need to run this company with, uh, with core values in place. And they set a list of values, it's literally seven values um, that we've, we've grown the company with. Um, and it's actually pretty amazing to see um, seven years later, I joined the company uh, six years ago at this point. Um, every time we do a, a reset at the beginning of the year, we bring those values out. We show you know, new employees what Giphy is really about. Um, and we, we work with partners based on these values. It's really important to us. So um, you know, small ways, small ways that, that I think go, go a long way um, in terms of just uh, setting yourself up for success and creating, you know, real, uh, real partnerships that are going to last. Mm. But at the same time, a, a value, a written value is not a value that is respected or actually executed in the right way. Right. So how do you actually make those happen? And, and if, if you, if you care to share a few of the values that Giffy has, that'd be great. But then again, I can write a value and I can say, we are honest, but that, that doesn't make us honest. That just, makes us say that we're honest how do you nurture them i completely agree and i think it's it's really in the way that you it's in the way that you that you hire and with the people that you surround yourself with right so um again these values are taken into account when when we're when we're interviewing people and when we're when we're talking to new partners as well we've you know we've rejected or not rejected but we we haven't gone through in deals with some partners because maybe we don't see eye to eye so it's it's making sacrifices that you think is for the better of the company, um, dependent on those values, right? So, one of one of Giffy's values, for example, is to um, is to always be yourself, right? As weird as that comes, and that's what and that's what we say. So we're always we're always hiring, you know, let's say people that are that are very different or um, just things that, that would make you uncomfortable is what we like to, is like what we like to surround ourselves with a little bit, right? So um, small things like uh, going to a meeting, you know, um, the, the way that we dress, for example. At Giphy, we don't really dress up for situations. We don't dress down for situations. We dress the way we dress, right? So um, today, you know, you're, you're looking at me and I'm wearing a black t-shirt, black jeans. This is literally what I wear pretty much every single day. If I'm meeting with the top executive at FIFA or uh, a guy who's running, uh, you know, a, a music, uh, I don't know, who's producing an album, I would wear the exact same thing. And that's something that we keep, you know, consistent along, along the way. Um, and it's, it, I think it's a key aspect. And I know that, mm. you know, that's a funny, quirky value that I shared, but um, it's one that we, that we make sure to, to, to respect and follow, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to, um, stop people from being who they are. So, mm -hmm. uh, that's just, uh, one way that I think we, we, uh, we keep these values, uh, strong and, and we, we keep these partnerships strong mm -hmm. as well. I want to know what's your weird thing then. Why did they hire you initially? What was that <laughs> thing that they saw on you? I don't want to ask. I don't know. That. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, uh, that's great. Um, and uh, yeah, I totally agree. I, I, I believe that uh, obviously values are extremely important and the way that we fit into a company's values makes it, make, makes it I mean, makes, makes a big deal and, um, and really changes or can affect the way that we operate. Um, 
nevertheless, I, I still believe that there's there's a lot of companies that talk about values, but they don't actually show them. Um, so again, this just as a question, how, how would you say, or how would you recommend someone to actually stick to these values? Um, how, how, how would you, what would be the kind of the, the things that you would say, hey, look, if, if you really want to stick to these values, how, how can you show them in every day um, and not just pour la galerie? Oh, ooh la la. Uh, yeah, I, uh, that's also a, a, a great question. Um, I think it's, it's really about baking it into, since we are talking about strategy, really baking it into the strategy of the company, right? Overall, um, we're, we're living in a, in a world now where a lot has happened in the past year and a half. Um, a, lot of, a lot of people have, have been under stress, um, you know, here in New York, things were, were terrible. Now things are looking a little bit better, but we're not fully, fully there yet. Um, but it, it's, it's about making, making sure to do that reset. Like I told you, you know, at the beginning of the year, we always reset. We always strategize. We always brainstorm. Um, we let everyone into the brainstorm. It's not just a brainstorm where, um, you know, the, the, the C-suite participates and they kind of determine what we're going to do as a company. It's literally 100 employees all in this year was, was crazy in a zoom, in a zoom. And we broke out into little rooms and we talked strategy. We talked brainstorming. Everyone can throw out an idea. Um, and those ideas are really taking in, into account. Um, so it's, it's about doing things like that and really setting the, uh, setting the strategy or setting just the, 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 the values throughout and weaving that into our actual work process, right? So uh, I guess a good example of that is I, I work with, with content. Um, I'm the, the senior director of, of editorial here at Kiffy, so I really get my hands dirty with the content. Um, and one of our, one of our main uh, propositions this year is to focus on diversity and inclusion. So how do we do that? You know, obviously I was saying like, you know, on our, on our trending feed, if you go to our homepage, it's messy and it's a dog skateboarding and it's uh, a happy birthday gift but how do we make sure that everyone is included in this like how do i make sure that someone from sydney australia will sign on to will go on to giphy.com and say oh you know what i actually relate to this gift mm. as opposed to someone in argentina going on and saying oh i can relate to this gift as well so it's about being um as inclusive as possible um, in creative ways because it's not always uh, it's not always easy, and it's also about taking taking chances. We've had you know some some content on the site that is um, you know uh, let's say a little bit like politically charged, for example, with with the election last year here in the states. You know, stuff was really tense, and um, we decided to uh, take stances. Right, we decided to not let um, people be political on, on Giphy to a certain extent, right? Um, so if there's like any hate speech going on, if there's any um, type of thing that would be considered, you know, sensitive, we wanted to make sure that, that, we, were, that we were looking at that and giving it, you know, obviously if it's, if it's sensitive but doesn't hurt anyone or, or in that sense, we'll keep it on. But we wanted to make sure that, that we were being as inclusive as possible, right? So mm -hmm. Um, that's something that came out of the brainstorm earlier in the year. Um, it was something that was applied to our content strategy and our, and our overall company strategy. Um, and it's something that we continue to evolve today. Um, we've set up uh, a moderation team. We've set up a, what we call a real time team um, on editorial uh, that uh, is primarily focused on these kind of events. So if you know, any type of event pops up in the world, uh, we are ready and we're, we're focused and plan to, uh, to try to approach it in the Giphy way, you know, mm -hmm. of, of inclusivity and, and being as, uh, as diverse as we can with our content. I guess that obviously to be diverse, um, you also have to have a diverse team, a diverse, a diverse team yourselves, right? I mean, it's, it's hard for you, although you, you can be online all the time and read the trends to identify or relate to things that you are not. So um, what is your, uh, if, if there's any policy to hiring or, or because I was actually, it's fun. I was having a conversation yesterday with, with a friend of mine. We were walking 
um, here in Sydney. And um, she she told me that uh, she was getting, a, a, she, there was a lot of people contacting her because she was female and, and not a lot of females did the job that she was doing. And a lot of people were just reaching out for her, uh, to her because she was a female doing what she was doing. Um, right. and, and then you have this kind of, uh, in inverse uh, discrimination where you're actually trying to get someone because they, they they feel the quota but at the same time you you have to do it it's it's a weird conversation or it's 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 strange because obviously at some point you really want to get diverse but at the same time you just don't bring people because of the diversity or you do what is what is your policy if you have any and uh, and, and how do you then translate that to the teams and the way that you operate in the platform itself yeah, totally. So Giphy has always actually prided itself, even back in the day, seven years ago, on um, hiring based on on diversity, right? So um, even even to this day, we're actually uh, we skew heavier female than we do male, which in the in the tech world is not a very common thing, um, and and that is exactly because of 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 our hiring and because of the people that we like to surround ourselves with. Um, so for the first, I want to say four years of Giphy, it was kind of a, a mad scramble to try to get, you know, whoever we could. And then once we decided to, to really build something and build a foundation for, for, for what the future of our company was going to be, um, we did set, you know, we, we set rules that we were going to follow, um, to hire more, more diverse people. Um, and that includes, you know, things like in a pool of, uh, of six people, at least half of those have to be some kind of minority, right? Okay. And even, even with just doing that, you, you already get to a place where you're kind of on an equal, not an equal playing field, but you're, you're giving opportunity equally, right? It could be three people, three you know, white males, and then you have three minorities of, of whatever, of whatever, uh, of whatever uh, you, wanna, you wanna go with. Um, mm -hmm. But that, that is something that we do in, in our hiring process. Um, and that's evolved to, to other things, right? To um, even, even going one step further when it gets to the final, the final two, for example. We really try as hard as we can to find you know, minorities that fit those roles. If for some reason we can't, we will, we will still try to get one and one at the end of, at the end of our interviewing process. That way, it, you know, it's, still, it's still a... Uh, a little bit of a battle there. And there's still, you know, that, that, that sense of trying to create a, a little bit more of a diverse community. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's about who the right person is for the job, but we mm -hmm. take into consideration very, 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 very highly, you know, where you come from, what your background is, um, you know, what you can, what you can bring that's, that's different to the company as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that even goes back to our, to our weird, you know, stay weird type of value. Um, we want to learn from other people. We want to learn from other uh, nationalities and other races and other ethnicities. So it's it's something that um, kind of you know Giphy Giphy lives and breathes, and we try to we try to actually make a difference when it comes to the to the hiring as well. That's well, that's that's great, and um, I feel I feel like I would be biased, obviously, because I, I think we, there's there's the study where we tend to be obviously more sympathetic and attached to what we know. So um, I'm guessing it's also hard, but un until you break this this uh, this rule and and you really start getting diverse, then er since everyone's diverse, there's there's no similarities. Obviously, there is always similarities, but then you you start to feel and see in a different way. Like once you've taken that track, it probably makes it way easier than uh, being, a, being a more um, non-minority uh, company and then trying to get diverse. Like that, 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 that's probably way harder. Um, and, uh, and, and, and obviously you, you talked about growing, right? The, and how you've grown from being three, six to now being a hundred in a Zoom. So, um, so I wanna ask you about, about that, about scaling. How, how do you scale something like Giphy? How, how did that happen? How do you scale a media startup? Uh, that's that's a, a question for for our uh, our higher ups, I would say. But I, I can definitely you know give it a give it a crack. Um, you know, it's <laughs> it's about going going slowly but quickly at the same time, right? It's about really thinking about the decisions that you're making. 
Um, it's about having a strategy in play, <laughs> making sure that you're that you're sticking to uh, uh, to to the to the bone, but at the same time, you know, realizing that there's other that there's other bones that are going to keep this this thing together. Um, so, in terms of of Giphy, for example, um, we started off as it was just a project on what what the CEO calls Hack Day, which was he was working for one company and during uh, one day out of the year, you get to just do whatever project you want. And, and he, you know, his idea was, you know, I have a ton of gifts on my, on my desktop. So why don't I create a way to share these? And he created a gift search engine, obviously a very, you know, rustic, rudimentary, uh, rudimentary one. Um, but then that small idea led to uh, him, you know, talking to his friend who was, uh, studying film in uh, in college, who knew a lot about movies and TV shows, and they opened up a conversation about, hey, what what TV show gifts do we need? What movie gifts do we need on this platform? And that quickly evolved to, whoa, okay, so now we have you know an editor who was this guy who really liked um, you know movies and TV shows. How do we get to those production companies? How do we get to the producer of the TV show? So you build a partnerships team and then slowly from there, you know, you start building smaller teams that surround the entire, the entire product. Right. Um, so it went from, you know, uh, like I said, an editor to one engineer to uh, one web designer. And then those teams slowly, slowly grew. Um, and at first I will say it was, it was very run and gun. It was, uh, whatever you could get your hands on, you know, I was hired as, as a, as an editor, but I was also doing partnerships, business development. I ran social media for, for Giphy for a while. <laughs> I've never done social media in, in my life. If you go on my, on my account, you would be, you know, not very surprised at how terrible it is. Um, but, you know, you have to wear a lot of hats. And I think that is really how you initially scale uh, a startup business. It's, it's by hiring people that, you know, can handle a lot of different things at once, um, and letting them, you know, kind of evolve on their own, um, to where I now focus on content. Um, the, the, the guy who was hired to, to do the, the TV and, and movie gifts now is our, our editor in chief, for example. So he, he would be my boss. Um, and then, you know, things just, just evolved from, from very small and very hungry, you know, uh, uh, business folk to what it is now. Oh, great. You, you, you keep on mentioning this idea of strategy and that's great. Obviously that's what we want to talk about. So I want to kind of drive the conversation there as, 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 as we get to the end of this, which is how do you guys manage your strategy? What, what, what? has worked for you in terms of managing strategy. One, one of the things that we see a lot is people planning this beautiful PowerPoints and uh, Excel spreadsheets and everything. And they plan everything for the next year and the next five years. And then, you know, they put, it on, they put them on a folder and that's gone. How do you keep your strategy alive? And how do you go back and revisit that strategy as things like COVID happened, for example? Yeah. Um, so for us, um, and I'm not saying this works for everybody, but for us, what we've realized is that we strategize only, only a year in advance. We only strategize for, for one year and, and we work on that year and, and we work on that year throughout the year, obviously, with a re-strategize strategy, or I guess we, 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 we go back six months into it and we look at the strategy again and make sure that this is still working. You know, so um, it's it's in very short increments. Obviously, we are a tech startup, so when before you know before any acquisition or anything, you have no idea how long it's going to last. So you're going day to day, month by month, seeing what you can do. Um, but we've we've kept that. You know, uh, we we've scaled now to a to a much larger company, and we've still kept that that theory in place, that strategy in place, where once a year, the beginning of the year, where where I mentioned before. Um, we do a brainstorm first, everyone is involved. And then from there, we build our strategy, right? Um, mm -hmm. And that strategy is, is built in the, at the company level. 
Then it's built at the product group level, which we, we usually split it up into three product groups. Um, and then those are broken out into team level strategies. So it's all kind of a, a pyramid um, of, a, of a strategy uh, where each team can really focus in on what, they, on what they're trying to do with the greater goal of whatever the company goal is that year um, as the, you know, the, the, the prize, the thing you're trying to get to. Um, and the way we really keep it, we keep it kind of uh, flexible and, and, and alive is that we revisit it every single month. Um, we make sure uh, to do a, a, a leads meeting where um, we go through our strategy. We see, you know, was this accomplished? Yes, no. If it wasn't, should we move it to the next month? Is it worth it? Maybe not. Mm -hmm. So maybe you scratch it right there. If it is worth it and you think it's still part of the, the overall scheme, then you push it to the next month and you keep working on it and chipping away at small things um, to accomplish that larger goal, as I was saying. Um, so yeah, I think, I think keeping it, um, keeping a strategy relatively uh, short in, in length of, of time um, really helps with focus. Um, and, and that's what we do, we do at Giphy. Usually we, we focus on one product a year. Um, uh, and we, we just kind of go with the flow and, and we make sure to be flexible and to be realistic, right? Mm -hmm. Because, um, there's nothing worse than getting to the end of the year and saying, oh man, like I didn't do any of this. This is terrible. Like we didn't accomplish any of the goals. So, um, it's very important to keep revisiting those things and being really honest with yourself about what you can and cannot do. When you say products, what, what is, what's the product, for example, you're working now in 2021? Oh, funny you ask. Uh, this is perfect for my shameless plug. Uh, we, our, our newest product is called Giphy Clips. Uh -huh. um, essentially what it is, is GIFs, but with sound. Um, so think of, you know, your favorite uh, short GIF that you always use, but add, you know, whatever the audio is to it. Um, and we found that people love, you know, to share those. It's, it's a great way, you know, we've evolved from GIFs to stickers where you're layering things on and now giving it this extra, you know, boost of, of audio can really, uh, can really push it to the next, to the next level. And it's not about sending, you know, a, a YouTube clip that's 30 seconds long. It's about a literally second to two second snippet. So, you know, whether it's, uh, uh, you know, an office GIF where he's, where, where he's saying, no, 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 something like that. Something just quick to the point and something that really you can use in messaging, right? It's not something awesome. that kind of cuts up the, 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 uh, the conversation. <laughs> I, I definitely want to go and get the Jonah Hill one where he's like doing yes, something exactly. like that. I don't know if that one comes with a sound, but that would be fun to get out for sure. We'll try to get it. We'll try to use our partnerships to try to get that one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Uh, Tom, um, as, as we close this conversation, is there anything else you, you wanted to share? Something that I should have asked you that uh, I didn't? No, I think I think we've covered a lot in in a short amount of time. This was this was very it, it was very cathartic for me to like let some of this stuff out. Um, Amazing. And kind of explain explain the the method to the to the madness. So thank Great. you so much. I uh, appreciate it. What are you? I, I do have a final question, which is, what are you more, most excited for? Um, looking forward in either this second half of twenty twenty one or what's coming up for you guys. Uh, you you might already know this, but we're uh, my wife and I are about to have a, a second kid, so very excited about that. Um, literally any any minute now it could come. Um, the due date is in in two days, so it could come any minute. So that's what I'm looking forward to. A little bit of time off with uh, with the one that's already uh, Penelope, that's already one years old, and uh, the new one that's coming now. So uh, that's that's what I'm excited for. Another Messi fan uh, in this world. So uh, you know super it. Excited Boca, it. Boca and Messi. <laughs> Boca and Messi. Mr. Tom, thank you so very much for your time. It's, it was great to talk to you. And um, I hope we can do this uh, another time. Thank you, Luki. Really appreciate it. Talk to you later, man. See you later. Bye.